Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Smart Board training session. Today, we're going to be um, spending a little time talking about um, a method that will help to incorporate interactivity into your Smart Board lessons. The method that we're going to be talking about is um, a method referred to as Hide and Reveal. And Hide and Reveal activities really do an excellent job of helping to make Smart Board lessons more interactive. They're relatively easy um, to create and use, and they work quite well in increasing the amount of interactivity that um, you can incorporate into any given smart board lesson that you so choose to make and do with your class. Today I'm going to be showing you three um, basic techniques for revealing information. And detailed instructions on all of these techniques can be found in your beginner smart notebook um, learner workbook on pages 41 through 43. So um, hopefully that'll help you when you're working on creating um, smart board lessons using the height and reveal activities later on. Okay, the first type of height and reveal activity that we're going to talk about today is a technique referred to as move and reveal. The second one is called order and reveal. And the last one that we're going to discuss is called Erase and Reveal. So let's go ahead then and get started. Okay. Um, the first thing that you have to do whenever you want to create a move and reveal activity is you need to start out by typing a question and um, the answer that goes with it. So for instance, in my case here, the question I chose is, where is Tutankhamun's tomb? And then I typed in the answer, the Valley of the Kings. Okay, now, in order to type text onto a smart notebook page, it really is quite simple. All you need to do is click once on the page, and then if you go down to the bottom of your smart, smart board, um, you'll see something called a pen tray. And in the middle of the pen tray, right in front of the eraser, you will see a couple of buttons. The button on the left is a button for a keyboard, so press that button once, and then an on-screen keyboard will appear. And now I'm just I'm going to go ahead and just type in the word fall since it is almost fall. And once I finish typing in the text that I'd like to um, include on the page, I'll go ahead and click the X on the um, on-screen keyboard to hide it to make it disappear. And then if I click a couple times on the page, you will be able to see what you've typed. Okay. So now here you can see it, I've typed the word fall. And that's all that's, that's all there's really to, um, that's all that's involved in entering text onto a page. Okay, the second step in creating a move and reveal activity involves creating a shape or an object to cover the answer to the question that you've created. So, in my case here, I decided, I'm, I decided to make a rectangle to cover up that answer the Valley of the Kings. And making an object like this is really very, very simple. All you need to do is pick up a pen from the pen tray at the bottom of your smart board. I decided to just go ahead and use the black pen. And then draw a rectangle. And then once I've drawn my rectangle, I'll go ahead and click on it once. And then you'll see um, a rectangle printed in blue dashed lines formed around the rectangle that I've drawn. Okay? And in the upper right corner of that blue dashed line rectangle, you'll see an upside down triangle. That's a symbol for a drop down menu, as I'm sure all of you are aware. And at this point, I'm sure all of you use drop-down menus quite a bit, so we don't need to spend a lot of time talking about that. Simply click on that upside-down triangle, and then go up here and click on Recognize Shape, and lo and behold, you will have formed a perfect rectangle. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do then is fill my rectangle in with color. And in order to do that, I will click, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Fill icon or Fill tool, which is located in the Tools panel of the Smart Notebook toolbar at the top of your smart notebook page. It's the one that looks like a paint can. And when I do that, it's going to give me a choice of colors to use. I'm just going to go ahead and use maroon, just like I, just like was used for the rectangle at the bottom of this page here. 
I'll click on maroon, then I'll click once on the rectangle, and lo and behold, I've now created um, a rectangle to use for hiding my answer. Okay, moving on, step three says to go ahead and double click the shape for the ability to add text to it. Okay, and then when you do that too, you want to make sure that your text is a different color than the color of the rectangle that you have. You want to make sure it's a color that will show up well on the rectangle. And if we go down here, we'll see in step four why that's important. It says, type move the box to reveal the answer. So I went ahead and I typed the words move the box to reveal the answer on top of the rectangle. And notice that I chose neon green for the color of my text to make sure that it shows up well. And the reason it's important to provide instructions like this is without these instructions, the user may not know exactly what they're supposed to do with the rectangle. Um, they might think that they need to type the answer um, to the question inside of the rectangle. Okay, step five then says to cover the answer with the rectangle. So here I have the answer, the value of the kings. I simply take the rectangle and I go ahead and lower it down so that it covers up my answer. But oops, it looks like my answer, the value of the kings, is on top of my rectangle. I want the answer to be behind the rectangle. So in order to, um, in order to fix this issue, no big deal. I just go over to the right side of the rectangle, click once on the rectangle, click once on the rectangle, I, then I go ahead and click on the drop down arrow in the upper right corner of the blue dash um, rectangular um, object around the rectangle and go down to order. And what I want to do then is I want to move the rectangle in front of the answer. So I click on bring the front and then that, will, that moves the rectangle then in front of my answer. So my answer is now hidden. Okay, and step six then shows what a finished move and reveal activity looks like. The question, where's Tutankhamun's um, tomb? And then if I go over here on the right side of the rectangle, it says move the box to reveal the answer. I simply drag the rectangle off to the right, and we can see the answer there, the Valley of the Kings. Okay, the next type of height and reveal activity is an order and reveal activity, and this starts out in a very similar fashion to the move and reveal activity. We start out by typing our question, where is Tutankhamun's tomb? And then we go ahead and we type the answer that we want hidden. Um, the directions say that the answer should be typed in the same color of ink as the color of the page background. But if you go ahead and do that right away, you're not going to know where your answer is on the page. So I've chosen to type my answer in green letters there simply so I can find it. I can always change the color later on. And then step three says then to go ahead and create a shape similar to what we did in the move and reveal activity. Um, to make sure you create a shape that's larger than your answer and then go ahead and put a color in it that's different than the color of the page background that the shape is located on. Okay, step four then says to cover the answer with the shape. And notice here in step four, I now have the answer printed in neon green letters, the Valley of the Kings. And what I'm going to do is simply, I'm simply going to take my um, rectangle here, drag it down so that it's covering the answer. Step five then, um, give directions for using the rectangle. It says to go ahead and click the drop down menu of the visible shape. So I go ahead and do that. Then it says um, select order and send the back. And by doing that, that will bring the answer to the front. And lo and behold, here's our answer to Valley of the Kings. Notice that at this point I've now changed the color of the Valley of the Kings. Um, to white text. Ok, 
Okay, step six says to go ahead and add those instructions that we saw in step five um, to let others know how to use the activity. And then we finally see the finished order and reveal activity. Where's Tutankhamun's tomb? We see the directions. And if we go ahead and follow these directions again, click on the um, rectangle, click on the drop down menu, click on order, click on send it back, and lo and behold, we see our answer again the Valley of the Kings. Okay, the last type of hide and reveal activity that we're going to um, spend a little time briefly discussing is called Erase and Reveal. And this one again starts out in a similar fashion to the Move and Reveal and Order and Reveal activities. We start out by typing in our question and our answer. Okay, then step two says that we're going to need to go ahead and use a pen tool. And the reason we need to use a pen tool is um, what we're going to try to do is cover up the answer with ink that is the same color as the color of the page background that the answer is printed on. So, for instance, in this case, the page background, is the background color of the page is white, so we want the color of our ink to be white. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do then is click on the pen tools icon in the tools panel of the Smart Notebook toolbar at the top of the Smart Notebook page, and then next I'll click on the pen icon in the contextual panel of the Smart Notebook um, toolbar page. Click on the pen, and then I'm going to click on the color selection icon of the contextual panel of the Smart Notebook toolbar at the top of the Smart Notebook page, and select the color white, since that is the color of the background. Now, because there aren't any white pens on the pen tray of the smart board, I'm going to use my finger as a pen. To cover up um, the answer. Okay, and then now we can see the finished erase and reveal activity. Um, where is Tutankhamun's tomb? And in order to see the answer, we are going to need to erase the white ink that it was used to cover up um, our answer in the Valley of the Kings. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on the eraser icon in the tools panel of the Smart Notebook toolbar. And then over here in the contextual panel, I'm going to click on the medium size eraser. And then, if I simply drag across the screen, I see my answer, the Valley of the Kings. Okay, now, I'd like to briefly um, show you an example of a hide and reveal activity that I created for a lesson that I was actually doing with students of my own. Um, a couple of years ago, I created a sequencing activity to use with um, my kindergarten class in the library for one of the books that I was reading to them. And this is what the activity looked like, and I'd like to very briefly show you how I constructed that activity. Okay, I started off by um, taking a blank smart notebook page and trying to figure out some items that I could use to help show um, getting ready for school in the morning, the different steps that are involved in getting ready to come to school. One of the items, so I went on the internet, and one of the items that I found was a jacket or a coat. So I copy that and paste it onto the Smart Notebook page. Another item that I found was a picture of a school bus. So I copy that and paste it onto the Smart Notebook page. And the last item that I found was an example of different food items that a person would typically eat for breakfast. So I copied and pasted that onto um, the blank Smart Notebook page. Okay, next. I selected a title for the activity, Getting Ready for School, and then underneath the title, I typed directions for performing the activity. Okay, the next thing I needed to do then 
was to create um, boxes for covering up the answers to the activity. Okay? So, what I did is I went to, the, my, I went to my sidebar panel and I clicked on my gallery tab. That's the one that has like a picture in it. And at the top of this um, tab display area, over here on the left, we have a search bar. It says type search terms here. So what I did then is I clicked on the keyboard button on the pen tray to bring up the keyboard. And I want to get rid of the words type search terms here and replace them with the word rectangle. Because I want to go ahead and try to find out Try to find some rectangles that I can use. And again, once I finished using the keyboard, I click on the X to close it. And now, to the right of the search bar, there's a magnifying glass. If I click on that magnifying glass, that will give me a listing of all the different rectangles that are present in the Gallery Essentials database. So, if I go down here to the lower portion of the tab display area, I see my gallery results. And one of the items I see is an item that says pictures, and it says parentheses 40. And what that means is that there are 40 different pictures or rectangles present in the Gallery Essentials database. So I go ahead and I move down until I find a brown rectangle. That's the one I'd like to use. So I click on the brown rectangle, and then I go ahead and click on the drop down arrow in the upper right corner of the brown rectangle. Then I click Insert in Notebook. And one of the things I discover is that the brown rectangle is way too large. I can't have it this large, I need it smaller. So um, what I do is you'll see that there's a, a blue um, dotted rectangle around the brown rectangle. And in the bottom right corner of this blue dotted rectangle, there's a little gray um, circle. If I take that gray circle and I drag it toward the upper left corner of the brown rectangle, that will help reduce the size of the brown rectangle. Okay, once I get the brown rectangle the size that I want it, I go ahead and I go ahead and lower it in place. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do then is make a copy of the item that is the correct answer. Um, for that particular rectangle, which happens to be the breakfast items. I click once on those, <clears throat> and then I click on the drop down menu, and I click on clone. And that makes a copy of this item. Okay, now, because I want this item to be hidden behind the brown rectangle, I click again on the drop down menu, click on order, and I click on send it back. Okay, now this item is now hidden behind the brown rectangle. Okay, I go ahead and I repeat the same things. I repeat the same thing again for the jacket and for the school bus. And after I've created all of my rectangles and I have all of my answers hidden behind my brown rectangles, then I go ahead and I take my items from over here on the right side of the Smart Notebook page and try to move them in place next to the rectangle where they belong. Okay, so now I move the breakfast items up here. Then I go ahead and I drag the brown rectangle over, and I can see that I have breakfast items over here. But what I'd like is I'd like, this, I'd like to be able to see both pictures of the breakfast items, you know, side by side. So what I do is I move the um, brown rectangle back in front of the first picture of the breakfast items on the left side of the screen. I click on the picture of the breakfast items to the right of the brown rectangle. I click on the drop down menu. I click on order. And this and for this one here I say bring the front. Now, when I move the brown rectangle off of the breakfast items on the left, I slide it right underneath the picture of the breakfast items on the right. And that way we can directly compare to see the student can directly compare to see whether they have the correct answer or not. But that is how you go about creating this hide and reveal activity here.
So we're going to click on the page sorter tab and on, on, the, uh, on the sidebar. And once again, show you another picture of the finished height to reveal activity for the sequencing, um, the sequencing exercise. And finally, I'd like to conclude by just very, very briefly discussing why you would want to hide information before talking about it with students. Well, first of all, by this point, it should be blatantly obvious that one really good example for hiding information is when you want to um, ask students a question and let them try to figure out the answer before they see what the answer actually is. And that's what we really worked on um, this afternoon during our training session was developing hide and reveal activities to help um, cover up answer, to help cover answers and give students a chance to figure out what the correct answer is before they um, have a chance to actually look to see whether or not their answer is correct. Another use of Another good use of height and reveal um, is anytime you have multiple items printed on a smart notebook page and you don't want the students to see all of the items at the same time, um, height and reveal works excellent to help students remain focused on just that part, just those pieces of information that you're discussing or talking about with them at the time. So I've enjoyed having all of you here at the session this afternoon and if you have any questions or need any help in creating height and reveal activities for smart board lessons um, that you may be working on in the future, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you.